to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high functioning autistic. I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. I have these three new things, like a villain, an anti-hero, and a creature. And I hope you guys would be able to uh tag along as I uh explain these three things to you guys, just so you know. Here's the first one. Feast. Real name, none. Height, 150 feet. Weight, 93 tons. Status, villain, an intergalactic abomination. Base, the lone moon mobile. Intelligence, two brains. Behavior. Relentless, bloodthirsty, and destructive. She'll do all that's needed to cure her ravenous hunger. Lethality, as above. Weaknesses, broken nails, explosions, and electricity. Powers. She has the same powers as her sister. Eyes deep red, hair yellow and wavy. Origin. One time, Cosmic decided that one intergalactic abomination just wasn't enough. She then made a genetic copy of which Cosmic decided to name Feast. After giving her the powers of her sister, Feast was prompted to spread chaos around the planet Golivar, a planet inhabited by beings similar to the Lilliputians of the Gulliver Islands. After a while of destruction, Fang arrived to do the same thing. Due to their low IQ, Fang and Feast didn't realize that they were sisters, and they fought until getting an explanation from Cosmic. After the strong realization, Fang and Feast forgave each other and were since great allies when it comes to running, running rampant across time and space. Costume she wears the same outfit as Fang. Teams? She usually goes with Fang along with other villains. Original inspiration? Nancy Cobb Archer. Here's the next character, which is an anti-hero. Mind. Real name? Stephen Caesars. Height? 5 feet 8 inches. Weight? 163 pounds. Status? Anti-hero and lover of Electrica. Base? New York City. Mobile. Intelligence? 4 brains to two and a half brains. Behavior. Sneaky, cautious, and charming. He never cares about what others really think about his greatest love. Lethality. Only in terms of his powers. Weaknesses. He's a horrible fighter. He also has Stockholm Syndrome. Powers. He can make others hallucinate along with giving them bad seizures. He can also appear seemingly normal. Eyes bluish, hair none. Origin. Stephen Caesars was an everyday neuroscientist who wanted to know the secrets of the brain. One day, Electrica arrived and destroyed his lab, along with his giving him his destined powers. However, the two soon found that they were in love, despite their lopsided start. At one point, Electrica was carrying mind as she was flying across the sky when they were targeted by a series of F-14 fighter jets. Since Electrica couldn't use her electric streams while carrying someone, Mind decided to give them enough hallucinations to, mock, to knock most of the pilots down. As for their leader, Mind gave him a bad enough seizure to make him crash in a matter of seconds. Since then, Electrica and Mind are almost inseparable when it comes to their quality time as villainous allies. Costume. He dresses in casual clothes. Teams. Solitary with Electrica and others. Original inspiration? Mentality. Here's the last one, which is a creature, just so you guys know. Centipede. Real name? None. Length? 620 feet. Weight unrevealed. Status? Villain and resident of Africana. Base? Africana Alpha Earth. Intelligence? One brain. Behavior? Sneaky and relentless. It'll always try to get some meat. Lethality, as above. Weaknesses, being rivaled, it possesses a soft underbelly. Powers, it has great size, can crawl on flat surfaces, has infrared vision, can shoot paralyzing saliva, and is mostly covered in an armor-like shell. It occasionally travels in groups of four or five. Eyes, deep red, hair, none. Origin, when Cosma created Africana, she gave it a magic spell that mutated most of its residents to becoming big and deadly. The prime example 
is the centipede. It's similar to the biology of normal centipedes, but due to the spell was marked as the dominant species of the island. When a clutch of eggs hatch, the baby centipedes will immediately start hunting for food without needing a parent. In terms of its hunting methods, it's practically the closest that the Alpha Earth has to the nefarious Egyptian dune worms of the default Earth. For a long time, the centipedes were mostly unbeatable, but when Queen Conga came around, it was eventually changed from apex predator to notable prey. Costume? None. Teams? Solitary, or in groups of four or five. Original inspiration? Arthroplera, which is a basically an arthropod that's like six feet long. Imagine a centipede as long as the height of an adult human, basically. Well, those are the three things for me to explain for my creations, and I also like to talk to you guys about something. I've had a bit of a stressful day at work today, and I'm starting to question whether or not Disney should be trusted, because I notice how parasitic Disney is, and it's been around for a hundred years now. Like, I don't think it does... I've heard that there was a little boy who honestly thought that Walt Disney created both Spider-Man and Star Wars when he clearly didn't. And that makes me wonder, like, if I have to rely on Disney for the sake of my creations to succeed, what are the odds that they're going to plagiarize my work? And I've even known a time when a little boy was tortured by Disney to, in order to keep him from exposing any spoilers to upcoming information. The fact that they were willing to torture him over that, and then, later that very day, they snuck a tactical nuke under his parents' bed and had it disarmed for a time. The fact that Disney would go through that far just for the sake of money. To be honest, if I picture Disney, I don't think of Mickey Mouse. I think of Vought International in The Seven, and especially the notorious Homelander, because the fact that they would literally lie about one's morality just for the sake of money. Like, they literally made supervillains and then stated that they were heroes even though they never cared in the slightest just for the sake of money. That's trash, if you ask me. And the fact that Disney has become so parasitic and brutal like that, to be honest, I just wish that they would just collapse, because who has the goal to torture a child for money? That's immoral. I'm sorry if any of you guys are offended. I'm just speak in my mind, and I just need to make things work for this life. And if you guys want, I hope I didn't ruin my future when it comes to making this video. If you guys want, you could like, subscribe, comment down below, and share if you want. You don't have to. Hope you guys have a decent Thanksgiving and the rest of the year and such. And until next time, in transmission.